Hi there, it's Penny Wild Black Pen. So I have six amazing children from four different mothers. Uh, my children's names, my firstborn is Unkunzi, uh, Kunz Malang. My second born, Kunz Malang as a boy. My second born is Uzulu Khosi. My third, being my first daughter, is Africa Phoenix Joy. My fourth, another boy, is Ushaga King Stembiso. Uh, my fifth, my second daughter, is uh, Culture Rainbow Kanyezi. And then my last born, <laughs> that I call Skupu, um, he's got a lot of names. Uh, Unako, uh, Mangaliso, Luna, I call him Nyanga. I named him Nyanga. So, in for ease, I named my kids Nkunzi, Zulu, Africa, Shara, Nkanyezi, and Nyanga. Um, Nguni, Zulu. Uh, Nkunzi is a bull. Zulu is the heavens or the sky. Uh, Africa is obviously our beautiful continent. Um, you've got Ushara, which means shock. The king of the Zulus was named Ishara, which means something else. I named him Ushara, which is a shock. You've got Unkanyezi, which means star. And my last born, Unyanga, means moon. Four boys, two girls, which means I need more girls. I've got children with uh, four mothers and I get judged quite a lot by a lot of people. Understandably so. You know, we live in a society where... Once you have children with more than one parent, you are labeled a red flag and reckless and those things. And because I'm a man in particular, I'm seen as part of the pandemic that creates these single mother households and broken families. So a lot of people attack me for that. Furthermore, I'm not married to any of the mothers and people attack me for that as well. And I don't believe in the concept of formal marriage. I've spoken about this before and maybe I'll speak about it at some point again. Now... I had my first child with his mom. I was with her at the time. Me and her broke up. And then I had my second born, another lady. And then my third born I had with the first born's mother because we made up. We got back together and we had an, a child. All my children are planned, by the way. These are not oopsies and mistakes and, oh, I was drunk and, you know, we were having such a good time. I don't drink. I don't smoke. All my children are planned. Broke up with the mother of number one and number three. Um, I never really dated number two's mom. We had an agreement and an arrangement to conceive and to have a child. Um, our relationship at the time got strained and we had problems moving forward. And that's why I've kind of struggled with access to my, to my son. My fourth and my fifth, we had one after the other with the mother that I was with roughly at the time and before. And then with the last boy uh, I was with the mother and then and then we had him so what I'm trying to explain is I didn't have my kids like overlapping jay, carelessly clumsily you know N not to say that doing that if it's planned is bad but I'm just trying to highlight you know there's like a sequence the major difference between me and other men and maybe other women is my children were planned number one and I chose to have children I love I love my children. I love the idea of having children. I would love to have more children. To be honest, I wish I had 10, at the very least. Unkunz Malanga is turning 13 this year. I believe he was born in 2010. Unyanga, my last born, is turning 3. He was born in 20, 2020. So there's like a 10-year gap between him and, and Unkunz. 10-year gap. I had Unkunz at age 24. Anyways, I'm thinking of some things. 10-year gap, I think maybe this is what I wanted to say. I could have had a child in each of those years. You know, I could have even had two children in those years if I had other women that I had children with. So I could probably have 20, but I've, I've only got six. A lot of men obviously use protection, condoms. I have, I do. That's why I don't have 50 kids and I only have six, as crazy as that is. I... Broke my virginity with a lady that I, I really loved and had a relationship with back in high school. I think I was 16. Now, I'm 37 now. Let's say last year I was 36. That's 20 years. 20 years since I broke my virginity. And let's assume I was having sex, unprotected sex every year. I would have 20 children now. 
And if there were many other women involved, I could have 40, 60 children. So understand that like, I'm not crazy. I've had some kind of plan in my life and I've intentionally conceived of women who are mature, who are of right age and who have their own brains and also want to be mothers. So I'm not as reckless as people think. It's just, there've been times I didn't use protection because I was trying to have children. Whereas maybe other guys use protection because they're scared to have kids. They don't want to have kids or they're just happy with one or two children. That's the major difference. That's the major difference. It's not because I'm reckless, because I actually want to have kids. That's me and other men. Some men, unfortunately, maybe may be struggling, you know, with fertility or maybe the women that they're with. The guys are trying to fall pregnant, but the women are on some contraceptives or the women are not ready. That happens. A lot of the women that judge me, sadly, they judge me even though they probably might have or might have had way more unprotected sex than me. But they've used contraceptives. Could be the implant, could be the loop, could be the patch, could be the pull, could be the injection. They've used contraceptives, but they believe they are more moral than me just because they haven't fallen pregnant. Because they didn't want to. I did. Some of them have used morning afters. You know, they had their oopsies and they're like, oh, I'm not ready. And within 72 hours, they went and they took the morning after pill and therefore they didn't fall pregnant. Some women, sadly, I'm going to say sadly in this instance, they've aborted. Which means you had unprotected sex, you fell pregnant, and then for whatever reason you decide, you know what, I don't want to keep it. And then you aborted the child. And you might find some of the women that judge me, if we were to force all of them to have children for every time they had someone ejaculate inside them um, during ovulation, who knows how many kids they'd have. But they judge me, and it's okay, because, I mean, society conditions them to judge people like myself. I'm trying to highlight a couple of things. I'm different. I'm not your role model. Because, you know, and I've said this in private to certain people, that when people want to point at me, yeah, but look at Penwell. It's like, if you're going to try and copy my example, you must be willing to copy almost all aspects of my life. That's basically my line for my children. If you're going to say, ah, oh, Baba was swearing. Ah, oh, but Baba does this. These things that I shouldn't be doing. You can judge me if you want to copy me as my child. If you want to swear. If you want to go wherever you want, whenever you want. If you want to spend money recklessly. Copy the other aspects of my life. Make your own money. Be responsible. Take the consequences. Don't just cherry pick what works for you. I was born to be a father. Fathering is the most natural thing to me. Anyone who's ever seen me around my children will know how much I love my kids, will know how much my kids love me. My children love me, and I love my children very much. They give me a true sense of purpose. Because I do believe we're just on this earth to exist, to kill time till we die. <laughs> Excuse the pun. You know, and also to procreate, to ensure that the human race stays alive. So we have kids because someone had us. If people didn't have sex and had us, we wouldn't be here. So I enjoy that. So when I listen to the stories of an Elon Musk and Nick Cannon and other fathers that have lots of kids and kids of different women, I'm like, maybe they're crazy, maybe they're reckless, or maybe they're not. And the difference between them and some of the people out there that judge them is just they chose to have kids. You go around having unprotected sex all the time. You're just not falling pregnant and it's your choice. A lot of us, a lot of us, not all of us, a lot of us are responsible for our kids. My kids are not living off child grants from tax and social welfare. My kids are not milking the system. I provide for them. Their mothers provide for them. And my children have amazing mothers. All the four women I have children with are amazing. And they come from amazing families. They're not girls from broken homes where they've got absent dads and daddy issues. And these are strong, independent, intelligent women. Smart, capable. They make their own money. They get to go wherever they want and they don't need my permission. That's why they get to travel overseas. They get to work where they want. They get to. And that's the beauty of being with a woman who's intelligent and who's independent. Otherwise, I could go and find some ignorant rural girl who doesn't speak for herself, who calls me Ebo Baba and give her eight kids and find five of them and end up with like 40 children. But that's not the type of person I am. That's not the type of woman I'm attracted to. And that's part of the reason why my children are going to be amazing. 
They've got an amazing father, dynamic father, and they've got an amazing mom, dynamic mom that comes from a dynamic family. I'm intentional about procreating. I'm intentional about my children. Why am I not married to these women? Okay, number one, I don't believe in marriage. Number two, these women are not some toys and puppets where I just get to dictate, hey, you will marry me, you will marry me. Hey, since I have children with all of you, I'm going to marry all of you. When you think like that, it means you actually demean women. You look down on women and you think, don't these women have a mind of their own? They do. They get to make their own decisions. They have come into my life and they have left my life as and when they please, as they've done in other past relationships. In the same way, they intentionally chose to have children with me. These are women that own their lives. They have their own agency. They've never proposed to me. They could, but I'd probably have to turn them down because I don't believe in marriage. But they own their lives. It's not for me to dictate to them, I will marry you. But now I'm fully aware of single mother households because my children don't live with me. Besides Unkunz in Africa that lived with me for eight years and six years before their mom asked to take them to China. Uskupa, I see him all the time because me and his mom are in Joburg. So I get to see him a lot. Um, Ushaga no culture down in Pine Town, Durban, etc. But I have free access to visit them whenever. And if ever they were in Joburg as well, it would be a similar thing. I, I understand how important it is for fathers to be as present as they can be. For fathers to impart knowledge and information and wisdom and skills. For me to toughen my kids up, to expose them to my networks, to make sure that I'm building them. And also, to also give mom a break. Mom also needs to have a good time, to live her life. I understand that and I appreciate that. So it would be my wish. Look, to be honest, my preference would be for all my children to live with me. I would love for that. But I understand there is something called female privileges. And normally the mothers get to choose who the children get to live with. Because in Africa lived with me because their mother chose that. It's, it's kind of how it works until further notice. Because equality is actually a myth. I would love for all my kids to live with me. But in the absence of that, their mothers are happy to be their moms. And I get to see them as and when I can. It's the reality of life. Now, how do we fix some of these things? Communication, uh, openness, transparency, and having some type of dialogue with the mothers and the kids to figure out, are you happy? Are you healthy? You understand mom and dad are not together. You understand we live in different places. Do you know why? You know, are you okay? Because it's one thing to have an absent father it's another thing to have a father that is not present due to circumstance. What do I mean? I mean, some fathers run away from their kids for various reasons. They run away. Um, I don't endorse that. I think even if you don't have money as a gent, even if try and do your best, because this child is going to be a functioning member of society and they could be a great investment for you as well. Then there are men who are not there. I could be married to one woman and we could have two children. But I could be a member of parliament, a minister. I could be a big time celebrity and I'm constantly traveling, traveling around the country, around the world. I'm never available. The kids get to speak to me via video. Even though I decided one woman, two kids, I'm busy. Same with their mom. Their mom could be an executive somewhere or a politician or a celebrity. And she's always traveling the world and she's always somewhere. And I'm there and I have to make sure that I do best by my kids. Those kids, if you speak to them, are healthy kids. Where's your father? He's at work. He's working. He's always traveling. Where's your mom? She's working. She's always traveling. But in a situation where every day you are reminding kids, oh, your dad's not around. It's so sad. Oh, the reason your child is not doing well at school is because their dad is not present. Oh, the reason your child picked up smoking. No, man. Let's be careful of how we raise our kids and the stories we tell them and how we're conditioning them to feel like there's something wrong with them. Nah. Kids, kids need basic things. Shelter, they need food, they need clothing, they need uh, a sense of belonging and identity and love. And then they need education and skills so that they can learn how to stand for themselves as they get older. Can that be provided by their biological parents? Of course, that would be great. Some biological parents, unfortunately, are not the greatest at those things they're not really loving or they're not really smart so they can't impart the skills or maybe they don't have the money to provide a shelter so it is not always going to come from your biological parents some of the greatest teachers in your life some of your greatest role models 
Some of the people that have helped you gain opportunities. Some of the people that have sculpted the person you are may not be your biological parents. But what your biological parents need to do is they need to put you in spaces where you can thrive, where you feel love, where you have shelter, where you have food, etc. Essentially, that's our job as, as biological parents. To give birth to these things. <laughs> to make sure that we kind of take care of them where we can. And then to ensure that they have a great village and a community and resources that they can pull from to pull themselves into functional, value-adding human beings in society. There are parents that have a lot of money, great people that send their boys to Hilton and Michael House, which are boarding establishments from grade one. Now, can someone really say, oh, those parents hate those kids. Why would you send your children to the most expensive school in the country that is such a great education? It's because I'm doing what's best for my child. You don't call those parents deadbeats. You don't call Michael House and Hilton orphanages. You don't. But when it suits certain people, they drive this narrative. My children get to speak to me, get to communicate with me. I send them money. We chat. And as they get older, because they're still relatively young, I know our relationship is going to become stronger. My children get to watch my videos. They get to see their father. More than some fathers who are in the household but may as well not be there. The guy is cooped up in his own lounge or he's always with his boys drinking or he's always out. But he's meant to be married and present. My kids get to watch me anywhere in the world. They get to rewind and go back. They've got my books. They can read my books at any given time. They have access to me. They have resources. And on top of that, they have loving moms and a great network from my family, from their mom's family and everyone around them. I just wanted to share some of that because sometimes we think we understand, but we don't. And sometimes it's easy to bash and whatever, but you know, and even if I were to be a bad guy, reckless, building single mom households, building broken societies, understanding that I am sober, Understanding that I have my eyes wide open. Understanding that I am working with mature, intelligent women and not some children that are ignorant. Understanding that my children are in conducive spaces that help them to grow and thrive. Even if you were to hate me and judge me and not like me, please understand that this is my life. These are my decisions. The consequences are for me to bear. And I'm constant, constantly trying to become a better man, a better father, a better community builder, value adder. And I'd like to think my kids know that, or at least they should. And before we judge people, let's maybe try and find out what's going on. Let's also look in the mirror. Like I said, a lot of the people that don't have six children from four mothers, it's purely because they chose not to have kids. And I chose to do it. It doesn't mean I've had sex with more women or I'm reckless. You may find that I've had sex with way fewer women than most of the guys that judge me. You may find that I've had sex or I've had fewer intimate partners than a lot of the women that judge me just because they've not been on contraceptives, had miscarriages, had abortions, etc., etc. It's just, we just have to think. We just have to become better thinkers. And I know thinking is difficult. I know it's difficult. It's easier to get politicians and celebrities and mainstream media and all these other things to think for you and to dictate what is right and what's wrong and i'm just asking you to apply a little bit of logic that's all i love you guys um if you are keen to be a parent please be a parent and do your best and don't let people dictate to you how to parent as long as you know you're doing the right thing and as long as you love your kids and your kids love you do your best co-parenting fucking sucks <laughs> i'll tell you that now because we haven't been trained adequately in co-parenting um, I want to host sessions, seminars to have these conversations, co-parenting, you know, how mom and dad work. You know, I actually think single parenting is better than co-parenting, my opinion, and probably we'll discuss this or I'll make a video about this at some point. Um, we need to speak about step parenting. What does it mean to be dating someone with a child, to be marrying someone with a child or children? How do we work around that? How do we, as the step parent, connect with the other parent to see if we can create better relationships amongst the parties. We have to speak about blended families. I'm coming with my children, you're coming with your children, and then we have our own children. <laughs> and it's a mixed masala. And then you'll find when the children we brought into our relationship marriage, they then go and visit their other parents who might have 
other blended situations. It's modern family. And how do we mentally deal with some of these things? Like it's here. We're here now. How do we deal with these things? How do we minimize the damage for ourselves mentally? How do we make sure we have peace? How do we make sure we have open communication? How do we make sure that our children aren't traumatized and damaged? And they're like, look, this is the reality of my life. And I know my parents love me. I know my other parents love me. I know my step parents love me. I'm showered with love. I have half siblings and step siblings and direct siblings. And I have friends and I have cousins and I'm happy. I'm in a thriving space. And then looking into the future, how do we raise our kids to live better? Are they going to be like us? Are they going to be better than us and be more disciplined? Or are they going to be worse than us? Where not only is it blended families, but then you bring in transgenders, then you bring in bisexual people, you bring in queers, you bring in other things. What happens with their generation? We don't know. All we can do is try our best. Try our best. And we need to have these conversations because if we don't, some weird people at the top, they are going to make certain decisions on our behalf and we may not be happy. And it's going to ensure that we are kept further away from our children, from our partners, and we're not building these strong homes with good values and good principles so that we are strong, we are winning, we are thriving, and we are succeeding in life. Just thought I'd share a little bit about my life. I'm happy to share a bit more. I hope when I share my stories, it allows you guys to be free enough to share some of your stories without feeling judged, ashamed, whatever the case may be. There are women out there with two, three baby daddies who are ashamed and never tell people. Don't be ashamed. If it happened that you made mistakes or there was a traumatic incident, I understand. But if you intentionally, I mean, imagine you're a woman, you want to have five children. You meet the love of your life. You guys have two kids. He cheats. He wants to be with another woman. Now you're with these two kids. You're like, I still want three more. But now you're scared of having children with someone else because you're scared society will judge you. Eventually, after years, you meet another guy. Oh, he's amazing. You decide to have another two children with him. Now you've got two baby daddies, four kids. Society is judging. Oh, you must be a slut. What it? And you're like, to be fully honest, I'd like to have one more child because I always wanted five. But if I have one more child, now I have three baby daddies. What is society going to think of me? You live your whole life. You are born alone. You're going to die alone. When you're miserable, you're alone. When you're hustling, you're alone. And you're going to let society dictate to you how many children you should have because you're scared of Abantubazo routine. What are people going to say? And you never got to live your full life and express yourself and become an Erika Padu because you're worried about what society will say when you're like, I want to have children. I love carrying. I love birthing my kids. I love raising them. I love breastfeeding. I love developing a child and growing them into a beautiful person. All because society says. And now you're here with these two kids with their father that left you for someone else. And you now almost don't even want to be with anyone else. I don't want to bring a stepfather. What if my kids don't? You're miserable. You're miserable because of society. I'm not endorsing having kids with multiple people. I'm not. That's for you to decide in your morals and your values and your dreams. I'm just saying... You need to pick for yourself how you want to live. And I hope that as I tell my story, it allows you to tell your story and to know that you're not crazy. There was a reason why polygamy existed and why it exists. There was a reason why certain women had kids with multiple men. There are legitimate, logical, commonsensical reasons. Don't be scared to live your life and do the right thing. Don't let society dictate you. The society we live in believes in so many things that are destructive to us. That we condone is correct. No man. Listen to yourself. Listen to your spirit. Listen to your soul. Listen to your inner being. Listen to your ancestors inside you. Pray, meditate, listen to your God, etc. Listen to you. And what is right for you. Live your life so that when you're 90 years old. And all your friends and family members have died. And you're alone. You're like I'm not ashamed. Because I lived a full life. And I, I took on all the consequences. But I was in control. It was me. And be happy. And be able to look at your children in the eyes. And when they ask you all the questions. Why didn't you marry mom? Why did you have kids with so many people? I'm like, oof. Let's make some coffee. Get some biscuits and rusks. Get yourself comfortable. And daddy black pen is going to tell you guys an amazing story of how dynamic and crazy and maybe stupid I was. So that you can learn. So that you can be inspired. So that you can understand the power of living intentionally. Living your life and your purpose and making sure that you have peace, happiness, 
and you are adding value to the world. Love you guys very much. I'll chat to you guys very soon. And I look forward to reading some of your comments and judgments uh, below. I love you. I believe in you. I hope that you love yourself. I hope that you believe in yourself. We have the ability to build a better world. It starts with, with you. Cheers.